Assalamu alaikum. Today we have a very interesting guest to meet with. Is the Imam Ihab Abdul Jawad. He is a person of great knowledge and experience. He is the Imam of the Islamic of Greater Clean at Clean, Texas. It's Clean, Texas. As you know, it's a hub of the military base at Fort Hood. Fort Hood, not Fort Worth. <laughs> Little different. Imam Ihab has three different bachelor degree from Azhar Univers University. Azhar University. In fact, the right pronunciation would be Al Azhar University. It's his, it's Egypt's oldest degree granted university. It's considered the most prestigious university for Islamic study and Islamic learning. Imam Ihab has a doctorate degree in Islamic theology uh, at uh, the Islamic University of North America. Uh, the doctorate research that he has is very interesting over here. It's about the intellectual safety for Muslim youth, 2020. But it's worth notice that not only for Muslim youth, it could be for any youth. At this book, you will see that he is touching base with so many problems that facing the American youth in general. Imam Ihab, he is an author of several interesting books. One of them called Islamic Dawa in America. Challenges and Prospectus. The, another one is Intellectual Security of American Muslim Youth. The third one probably is My Guide in Tawheed in English and Spanish. Let me try to pronounce it to you in Spanish. Mi Guaya Para Tawheed. Excuse my Spanish, please. I will leave some links about these books below. You might want to check it out. Imam Ihab has a vast amount of working experience. He held several positions as an Imam in USA. Also, he has seven years of experience teaching Islamic study in Saudi Arabia. Lucky you. Very interesting. Additionally, he is multilingual. His native language is Arabic, but he went he went to school and studied English, and he got a bachelor degree in it. And he went to another school to study Spanish, and he got a bachelor degree in it. Uh, you probably would like to check his YouTube channel, and it has very interesting subjects that uh, you might want to see what's going on there. During our discussion, we will learn more about him and how he helped his community to grow and strengthen their Islamic faith. We will also get a chance to explore something very interesting here. One of his teachers profoundly inspired him, and that's why he chose to be an imam or went for Islamic study. It will be an excellent opportunity to learn about this incredible leader and how he has impacted the lives of others around him. It's a privilege to have him join us in for this discussion. Please join us to the interview with Imam Ihab Abdul Jawad. Uh, let me have a little introduction about you, please. Sure. Uh, yeah. Then after that, you will introduce yourself as well. But we will do our best. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Imam Ihab, uh, he finished his education at uh, Azhar University. 
and uh, he worked in different uh, different masjids before that. And uh, he is uh, the founder of Amana Institute, which is uh, I will leave the the link below for uh, very interesting institution for uh, intellectual security. And he, of course, he is our beloved Imam for our masjid at Killeen, Texas. Jazakallah. And he is uh, Dr. Imam, Dr. Ihab. He is a PhD yeah. uh, in Islamic studies, and he will uh, tell us a little bit about it. Yeah. And uh, of course, me, my Muhammad, and Sayyid, who are two brothers who love talking about Islam. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Uh, we give you the floor, uh, Imam Ihab, Dr. Ihab. So you can, can you little, tell us a little bit about yourself and your experience and your life journey? We would love to know about it a little bit, please. Jazakallah khair. Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen. Wa ashadu an la ilaha illa Allah. Wahdahu la sharika lah. Wa ashadu anna muhammadan abiduhu wa rasooluh. Allahumma salli wa sallim wa barik. على سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وأصحابه وأتباعه إلى يوم الدين أما بعد uh, First of all I'd like to thank you for having me in that interview that in شاء الله will be benefit for, for me and for you and for every uh, person watch it and uh, <clears throat> secondly um, my full name Ihab uh, Muhammad Atiya Abd al-Jawad al-Faydi Originally from uh, Cairo, Egypt. Uh, been here in uh, USA more than 12 years, alhamdulillah. Uh, early, I joined Al Azhar Institute's uh, high school and then a university. Get my bachelor degree in uh, theology. Usul al Deen, mm -hmm. Tafsir, and another uh, bachelor degree in Spanish language, Spanish literature, and another one in English, alhamdulillah. Uh, I'm working hard for uh, knowledge, for studying, uh, and still study. MashaAllah. And then, alhamdulillah, <coughs> I have a master's degree in Islamic studies, theology. And it's, it was about the challenges of da'wah in uh, America and take Texas as example. Mm -hmm. And PhD in uh, theology. It was focusing on uh, intellectual security for the youth, Muslim youth in America. And uh, as I would come from that um, PhD uh, project, uh, and I established an institute for that purpose, to work for research and apply these researches in um, lectures, sessions, counseling for parents, for youth, to secure and develop mm -hmm. the youth, secure their mentality, their intellect, and develop uh, their life to be better life. Yes. Alhamdulillah, I'm married. I have uh, six kids, alhamdulillah. Inshallah. And uh, working in da'wah early since, you can say, uh, 13 years old. I'm in the masajid till this minute, alhamdulillah. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blessed me by being in the masajid uh, since early, since uh, 13 years old. Uh, as servant, and as worker in da'wah field later, I work in Egypt, uh, in the Azhar Institute, middle school, high school, and uh, work in Arabia, Saudi Arabia, for one year, academic year, international school over there in Jeddah. Mm -hmm. And uh, came to USA 2007 as a visitor imam, visiting imam <coughs> in Ohio, Dayton, Ohio, mm -hmm. in Ramadan uh, 2007 and uh, came uh, to Panama City, Florida, uh, as a director for uh, uh, Islamic uh, Understanding Institute in Panama City, IUI, uh, and for two years, and then 
came to uh, Killeen, Central Texas, here since 2013 till present. Videos on online for him speaking Spanish. So anybody would like to be, speak Spanish with him, feel free. Uh, I will leave links about his uh, lectures in Spanish as well. It's very, very important. Uh, there's not so many um, uh, that speak Spanish, especially in Texas, that well need it. Yeah, alhamdulillah, right. this blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And this is uh, why I'm working uh, early from the beginning and choose that field, that car career, mm -hmm. to work in uh, da'wah in West. I had a teacher in high school, called Sheikh, uh, uh, I forget his name. He was an imam for the masjid, uh, London Masjid in Hyde Park in London. Uh, I influenced it so much by him, mm -hmm. uh, his character, his language, his, you know, uh, how he teach. And he gave us, you know, tapes for his khutub in English. Yes. So I look at myself in that position early mm -hmm. to work as an imam in English, by English or Spanish or So I joined, I joined after finished school, uh, the Faculty of Language and Translation. Yeah. A Spanish uh, department, four years. Four years? Four, yeah, four years no. to, to learn uh, Spanish language uh, for uh, work in Dawa field. Alhamdulillah, Allah, Allah. Spanish, uh, Espanol. Yeah. Uh, and then after that, I start my, you know, uh, projects to uh, reach to that, you know, uh, position. Alhamdulillah, Allah plus me, after learning English and uh, Spanish, uh, get to Ohio, as I mentioned before, Ohio and, you know, uh, Panama City, Florida, and uh, Killeen. And mm -hmm. I have, mashallah, videos on uh, my channel. No. Uh, has a big number from uh, Mexican, from, you know, these Latinos. Yes, we will, yeah. we will, we will leave... Uh, the link about data, which is very, very, very important yeah. for everybody. I, I have two books uh, in Espanol. Yeah. One uh, about Tawheed, Sharh uh, al-Aqid al al Sunnah al jamaa in Espanol. Mm -hmm. And Tafsir, Juz Amma, with all Espanol. Both of them available. We're in also the market. gonna leave links about or information about these books yeah. as well. Yeah, alhamdulillah. Uh, since you are speaking in Spanish and speaking in English, yeah, uh, would like to make sure that everybody understand that the Furqan, uh, that the way that the way we are contributed to this channel, it's mainly for the new Muslims, which is usually uh, English speakers. And right now, the big wave from the Spanish speakers. No. So uh, we are uh, trying to communicate to the new Muslims all over the place. And it sounds like you have a big experience over here in the masjid, no. in clean Fort Hood, which is considered a transition <clears throat> for the militaries around, around no. us over here. And uh, we would love to know uh, your opinion about uh, how the new Muslims convert to Islam lately from your experience. We, yeah. if, if anybody familiar with the masjid over here, the, it's almost, we have a huge number of people who converted to Islam uh, in a big, big wave. Yeah. Why, what's the most common reason for uh, those new Muslims converting to Islam. If you can breathe it to us. Sure. No. Alhamdulillah. This is a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for that place, for that masjid, and blessing for the community, and blessing for me, for me personally. Uh, Alhamdulillah, we have efforts to convey the message of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so through social media, uh, physically here in the mosque, in the office, and reach out to go and visit some uh, places. And Clean has a unique uh, position. Why? Because Clean is a place for the biggest, as I knew about that, mm -hmm. post or pays, military pays. Correct. In the, in the USA. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, uh, that allow the matter for um, people to come and go. Some of them, they go to Afghanistan, go to Arabia, go to uh, Kuwait, Egypt, Muslim countries. So they go there and watch on, on ground, real Muslims, real community, real society. Some of them impacted so much and love to study Islam. And uh, at the end of their journey for studying Islam, they accept Islam. Uh, so one of the reasons <coughs> visiting uh, the, the soldiers being in Afghanistan, in Pakistan, in Egypt, in Muslim world in general, mm -hmm. that give them a clear and pure and a strong, solid idea about Muslims and Islam. Uh, they come back and they convert to Islam and work for Dao. So they go and come back with friend, for wife, uh, neighbor, back. So uh, Killeen is international community, diversity. You will go to Korea, Germany, go here and there, and you know work in the Dawa. So I ex yeah, and help somebody to convert, and then the buddy go in his work, and he work with the friends, with co-workers, with the you know people around him. So back to the office with one or two, something Mashallah. like that. Yeah. So Alhamdulillah, receive here, Mashallah, since 2013 until now, uh, 120 mm -hmm. uh, new Muslims, and still stand by or in waiting list like seven persons. They come today. Just I received two to ask about and learn about Islam. One Chinese person, one Mexican person, uh, before I share, just before I share today. And that's the, every week we have like two, three persons at least ask about Islam. Some of them study and after studying they accept. Some of them just take idea and go. What attracted them to the Islam, ya Imam? I'm sure you have a very good, 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 conclusion about why they convert to Islam. Uh, Not necessarily because because uh, our da'wah in clean, because not, a lot of them our, comes from all over the place. Not only us, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We are just means, we are just, you know, tool. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, because uh, many people think, right, about the life, about the purpose of the life and about the next life. And do you want to practice faith? Want to practice faith? So you go here and there and you study that and that and read here and there. So they figure out at the end that the Islam is right, the correct, acceptable, rationally, logically, and uh, their heart accept Islam. Mm -hmm. So just we uh, receive them and help them by information, by, you know, uh, welcoming and help them to take shahada. Yes. But at the end of the day, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, beginning and the end. It's Sounds Allah's like every, each one of them has a different reason. Exactly, exactly. But uh, the major reason is people look for faith, when I practice faith. And this is a nature of human, humanity. Human, human without faith is, is something, you know, wrong in his life must have faith. It's a depressed life. Uh, it's, not, it's not normal. It's not regular life to be without faith. You should have faith. Even those who deny God and believe in nothing, there's kind of faith at the end. That's correct. It's kind of faith, kind of belief. Mm -hmm. But uh, sound thinking to go to the true God who created everything in the globe. And being us here, we have a purpose, we have a mission, we have a target to be here in this life. So this question mark for many people, many people, you know, when you see somebody, uh, you know, 
fun, you go here and there, and you, you, it seems that he is careless or don't care about, no, no. I'm sure any human being, when he stand, sit down alone, he think about that, the yes. meaning of the life. Of course. What next? What about the next? Mm -hmm. we, we achieve everything, we enjoy everything, but still we, we need something. Something is not available in, in money, in, in property, in, in the desires we have and look for that, but something else. So they found that in... Alhamdulillah. Yeah. But as, as, as you see, there's, uh, this is uh, the, the life, the American life is dominating and it's uh, the easy word for us is busy, busy, busy. There's so much can be done, you know. And we have, we build, there is habits that build up on our life yeah. as a Muslim or non-Muslims. Mm -hmm. So we are talking about non-Muslims who are just trying to convert or thinking to convert about Islam. Yeah. And they are still thinking at the moment they are watching us right now. Mm -hmm. What's the challenging? Can you share the challenging sure. that they had mm -hmm. at, that holding them from getting into Islam. No, no. So you can share it with us. The people can be familiarized with it. So it's not only not only me, it's probably everybody else and eventually they did it. No, absolutely. There are many challenges. And <clears throat> our job to help them to pass and overcome these challenges. The main challenge when they convert Sometimes their family, their families, rejected that. It is a big uh, problem for some people, especially women, especially sisters. Mm -hmm. Some the society, some the, uh, you know, the work challenge. Uh, but alhamdulillah, because they came to Islam by their free willing by their mind by their heart mm -hmm. so they accept challenges and I have many stories many stories how they pass and hold on Islam mm -hmm. held in Islam and deny these challenges do you remember any story yes, but yes. just one small one many, to share it many just challenges something just a very young youth you know him uh -huh. uh, he converted 16 years old. 16 years 16 old. 16 years old, high school. Impacted by, uh, you know, his uh, classmate, Muslim's classmate. He loved Islam, he loved them, loved Islam. Study about Islam. At the end, convert to Islam. The reaction of the family, they denied that. The father kicked him out. Uh, mother couldn't accept that. So we held it. He got kicked out of the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And early, 16 years old, 17, still uh, young, cannot, you know, carry responsibility about himself, about living, about housing, about. So Allah put the mercy in heart of grandfather, mother, grandfather and mother, grandparents. Mm -hmm. So they took him and adopted him, alhamdulillah, and supported him. I told him, وَمَنْ يَتَّقِ اللَّهَ يَجْعَلْ لَهُ مَخْرَجًا Whoever fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will give him exit from what he have, from challenge of this of this uh, step to be a Muslim. So now he, like 20 years old, mashallah, in the college, or finished the college, or almost finished the college, and has a job. You are in contact with him? Yes. Yes. He get out from Killeen in, uh, in Texas, still in Texas, but different place. And uh, he working and studying. I almost finished studying and mashallah in good studying. Actually, we raised the fund for him. Yes, you remember. We raised the fund by the community. The community yeah. raised fund for him to pay yeah. some of his tuitions or stuff yeah. or the beginning of uh, his housing at exactly. the college. Yeah, Exactly, exactly. Yeah. This, this one from tens of cases like that. Hmm. So, so alhamdulillah, they, they, uh, because they love being a Muslim, they love come to Islam, so they uh, neglect or deny uh, these challenges and Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala it's amazing to see that 
uh, miracle of Allah with these people, support, support. But let me tell you, some of them fail to stand about these challenges, but few. They failed, so they returned back under pressure, under pressure. Subhanallah, and that in the early seerah of Muslims, you know, Sahaba radiallahu anhum, some of them could accept the challenge and pass the challenge, like Bilal, Sayyidina Bilal radiallahu anhu. Big story, Suhaib, big story. And, and, and from the Sahaba radiallahu anhu, they come to Islam, they challenge the society of the family of, of, of. Some of them, of the Sahaba also, they get under the pressure and respond the other side for a while. But still inside their face, in their heart, mm -hmm. the true faith is Islam. Like, uh, Ammar, Ammar ibn Yasir, the uh, uh, mushrikeen, they put him under pressure and asked him to insult the Prophet and get out from Islam. He did listen to them and he go back crying to the Prophet, Ya Rasulullah. I did such and such against you, but I believe in you. Please forgive me. He said, Don't worry. Don't worry. If they return to you, don't worry. Go with them. So the point is here uh, many challenges? Yes. People accept the challenges. And they pass it. Mm -hmm. And we help them. For example, al hijab for sisters. Hijab is obligation in Islam for sisters. Hair covers, yeah. Yeah. But when they come to Islam and wear hijab, some of them find challenges. Some know. However, these countries, mashallah, they may Allah guide all of them, a bless all of them, Amin, Ya Rabbil Alameen. They have constitution, guarantee, freedom of religion, right? Correct. Anywhere you are, I'm a Muslim, wear hijab, no problem. You wear hijab. But still, you know, some... Uh, uh, Just the public, public people. Yes, the ex people. exactly. The people and that, that's yeah. out of law, uh, or against law, against law. Mm. So, uh, sister wear hijab, I tell them, okay, you know, if you have a problem, don't worry. Go, your work. If there is a problem in the hijab, mm -hmm. don't worry about hijab. And wear hijab after that, before that, till you find exit from that challenge and ask Allah sincerely. Allah will give you exit and uh, outcome from that. So alhamdulillah, we help and support and asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to accept uh, uh, these uh, people and guide them and firm these steps on the journey of Islam. Ameen, ameen, ya Rabbi. Ameen, ya Rabbi. Go ahead. Sheikh Ab. Thanks again for your time and uh, no problem. You know, your effort. May Allah accept from you. I mean, I mean, from I mean, everybody I mean. works in the We'll take you back. You, mashallah, you work in Egypt and yeah. in Saudi Arabia. I mean, books is different story, but when you work in the field, it's different story. Sure. Yeah. What is the difference? Like as an imam in Saudi Arabia or in the in the field of da'wah in general? Yeah. You know, what the reason position is? Yeah. What's the difference between da'wah? in the Muslim country, the majority Muslim, mm -hmm. it was in Saudi Arabia or Egypt, or here in USA, like uh, we are minority. I mean, whatever the number comes in, we're still minority. Yes, uh, yeah. What is the, from the field, what is, we need Let to Let me tell you something the, about, yeah. about uh, my career over, overseas. I wasn't Imam. I have been teacher and khatib. What the difference? Teacher is, is known as a teacher. As khatib, you take just Jum'ah. You Jum'a Jum only. Jum'a only, yeah, yeah. You know that system yes, in Egypt. Yeah. Don't you think it's an easy job? It's yeah, all, it's you just prepare, prepare the khutbah <laughs> and go to the member yeah. 30 minutes and then all your job. Yeah, that, that's it's an not, easy Imam one. is different story. Oh, absolutely, that's what I'm saying. Imam is different story. Yes, yeah, guys, yeah. So I came here as an imam mm -hmm. and imam here is full time. Full time means 24-7. Correct. 24-7. <laughs> Sometime I receive... 12 at night, a message, fatwa. Sometime problem between husband and wife. Sometime uh, it's critical situation for a brother need help. Huh? So here the story is big different. Uh, in Egypt, I work as a teacher at Azhar Institute, 
middle school and high school. In Arabia, same teacher is not imam. But khatib, khatib go just Jum'ah. Khutb al-Jum'ah, khalas ala kid. Here in America, imam, salah, khutbah, counseling, fatwa, teaching kids, teaching adults, lectures, outreach, receive new Muslims, give them classes, non-Muslims give them classes, is a big, big difference. And maybe people see me in the in the masjid, just in Salah and Jum'ah, and the class is khatira and, but beyond that, back of the screen, many, many activities. And Khutbah al-Jum'ah, for example, here, however, I have bank, Khutbah, bank on my computer since يعني, 20 years or more uh, all these khutab available oh, my... I still have it yes okay, okay. yes yeah. sure word know. word and uh, you know it's ready to select from it but I have to touch the event the time the uh, what's need for the community in this week what Tab- they need to talk I need to, to talk with them this week I cannot bring khutbah 20 years ago and reveal it now. I can take the title and adjust some somehow in the in the talk, but have to be fit with the time. So start khutbah, prepare khutbah Monday. Mm-hmm. And finish it before Jum'ah one hour. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. Five, four days for khutbah, Jum'ah. Khatira at night, sorry, 10 minutes, 7 minutes, but I prepare it from early Monday, sometime for whole the week, sometime uh, one by one, according to the topic. Sunday class, I off, I'm off on uh, Saturday, but it's not off because I, <laughs> after Maghrib, whole the day with my kids, that Maghrib, I take my uh, dinner and then go to computer, prepare for the Sunday uh, activities. Alhamdulillah, it's a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for me. Uh, Being here, Imam, is uh, uh, not hard. After 12 years now, it's not hard. Uh, But, you know, from whoever, when I come to work as an Imam, uh, from overseas or even local, should learn that. Imam here is 24-7, work and open mind, open heart, open ears for everybody around him. So the people who receive the message in Muslim countries uh, are harder or easier than the people who are receiving the same exact message in a foreign non-Muslim country? uh, Overseas is, is very easy. It's not uh, like here. Here is hard. Here is harder. In overseas, the imam has assistant with him. Taban here in America, some masajid has. You're bigger a little bit. Yeah, 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 yeah. two imam, three yeah. imams. Yes, yeah. the big imam, and then two, one assist him, plus muazzin, plus security. It's, it's different from place to another. But to work alone, uh, it is big job. Uh, in, uh, in there. Uh, in Masajid, the government responsible for them financially, security, everything. Uh, the Imam has plan, like, like teacher, uh, work monthly with this. You're gonna talk this month one, two, three, four khutbah. Mm-hmm. This classes one, two, three, four for sisters, for brothers, for kids. For here we are free. The Imam by himself. Look at the needs of the society, occasions, Ramadan, uh, Hajj, uh, Isra al Mi'raj, think about that. And because of we are working with a different environment, a different uh, uh, civilization, we have to take care about that. The narrative, the language, the, the, the you know, concept, the terms we use should fit with the mentality of the people here. Go with them. So it's Islam, 
very flexible. Uh, reveal it for the on the ground. Mm -hmm. So Islam in America is still Islam in, in China, Islam in India, Islam in Europe, here in Africa. But you take care as an imam from the mentality of the people, level of the people. Mm -hmm. We learned that from Rasul Salam, Umir to and Ukhati Ban Nasa ala Qadri Ukuli. I was ordered to talk to people according to their level, mental level, how they think. Yani when you have society, majority of them PhD, master degree, professors, uh, doctors, uh, engineering, majority. It's not like society, ordinary people, uh, you know. But in America, they are not an ordinary people. They are knowledgeable, but not knowledgeable about religion or Islam in general. The approach. Yeah. I'm talking about the approach. Approach. Because At the not, end, yeah. you talk about, you, you deliver a message. Uh, yeah. That how to deliver the message, this approach. Yeah. This, this, this mentality who is work and research and how, because they're going to figure out you. Yani <laughs> one of the uh, statements coming in, in, in author, uh, Abdul Malik Marwan. Abdul Malik Ibn Marwan, Khalifa, Dawa al Caliph, now a married dynasty. He has gray uh, hair, you know. So they ask him, what happened for you? You are young and then have, you know. So the Khalifa at that time must deliver khutbah, khatib, must be khatib. In the big in masjid in the Ummah, the mosques or Baghdad. So mm -hmm. I answered them, how I'm not like that? while I'm exposed my mind every week for the people. Show my mind for the my mind to the people no. every week in khutbah. Because khutbah you show, you expose your mind to the audience. So the people figure out you. If they are high level of education, they discover you are uh, good or not good or whatever yani. the 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 levels of the people. So the point is, as an imam, as a khatib, must take care of that. Correct. The audience. Mm -hmm. Must take care of the audience. Can I say something? Yeah, yeah go ahead. Yeah. Like one in, uh, in one interview with a big sheikh, without mentioning games, in, in da'wah in Egypt, he was, uh, the interviewer told him, like, no, if you go back when you started da'wah, mm -hmm. what's the mistakes you did? It was a little funny. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I used to make khutbah in a big, like, kind of... Uh, Classy, oh. classy mm -hmm. place in in mm -hmm. in, Egypt, in Cairo, mm -hmm. and I used to do a khutbah, and the reaction was very good from the audience mm -hmm. because they're highly educated, mm -hmm. they make money, mm -hmm. you have to talk about riba mm -hmm. and the transaction, you know, mm -hmm. dealings, and they, when they invite me in the countryside, I do the same khutbah, mm -hmm. no reaction, <laughs> <laughs> because they, I said like I, I found out that even I talked to them, yeah. they simple people, they farmers, yeah. Yeah. you know, they need something exactly. like you know, exactly. what they, exactly. yeah, it's like you know, if I go back. Mm -hmm. I, I switch. Yeah. I started to switch, yeah. you know. And besides, like in the country, mm. a lot of them are deep in deen. Like yeah. the, the Hufaz, mm. the, you know about Hadith, mm. you need to get a little deeper with them, mm. religiously. Yeah. But the other people, dunya. This is like mm. the, the same point that I yeah. was talking about. Yeah. Yes, this yeah, is you have a, to adjust it. The, yeah. the, the yeah. genius and the smart, uh, successful Imam who mm. took care of that, uh, when you talk to, uh, you know, farmers, not to like, <laughs> like doctors, not like sisters, Every yeah. uh, career and every mentality has a way and approach to talk to her or him or there. So what's Very that? Important. What's that? What's the good approach for uh, for uh, I don't want to say the American society in general, but I would say <clears throat> to the people who has thoughts about believing in religion regardless what kind of religion mm -hmm. what kind of approach that could be for them because i find out that a lot of people who a lot of people convert to islam mo, uh, uh, mostly they have a little background about religion and the people who are non religious not not religious at all not, not, they are not kind of people who really approach searching for faith. 
Yes, here in this uh, blessing country, you know, the, uh, the best approach, scientific approach. Scientific approach, science. Alhamdulillah, that compatible with the Quran. Quran is a science way, scientific way. When you go, when Quran speak about the creation, beginning of the creation, talking about the solar system, talking about the galaxy system, talking about history of mankind, history of the uh, globe, all that take the mind of some scientific people, characters. Mm -hmm. uh, some people look for uh, religion and the faith from the rational side, rational side, to accept rationally, to be acceptable. Alhamdulillah, again, Quran has that way, approach. Talk to the mind, talk to the heart, talk, uh, firstly, think, uh, consider, reflect about yourself, about the globe, about the, all that in the Quran. So from that, here is a good approach as an imam, as da'iyah, to focus on that scientific, rational, logical approach to the people. And that's very strong and available in Quran. Alhamdulillah. Correct. Yeah. Uh, do they, do they uh, like kind of, um, uh, is that stays with them? Like, really, we need to figure out there is a problem that we were talking about it that uh, a lot of them get out of Islam after they convert to Islam. Yeah, it's another point. Not a lot of, some. Some not, not big number, but uh, because the challenges we talk about the face, number one. Number two, caring. Caring from the society. To care of them is not, is not enough. You know, uh, and when you go to, uh, to buy something from, car, buy a car or something like that, uh, there is after buying service customer service, you know? Yeah, after, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we should do, do like something like that. When mm -hmm. they convert, we keep in touch with them, attract them, by any way to keep them inside the faith. They get out of the faith, uh, some of them because they have misconception, misunderstanding, uh, you know, this is a major point, challenge, they face from family, from the community, from the society, and there is no support. Do you have a solution for it? Of course. What kind of solution that could be good for them? Here in Kilin, Masjid, our resource is not strong enough. But look, let me, we can do that individually or as a community uh, by keeping in touch with them and invite them and, you know, but that's not enough. In London, you have a great experience about that and trial about that. They make like school, full-time school, 24 hours. They stay for 40 days in the masjid, in the school. 40 days, that new masjid? Four, yes, uh -huh. 40 days. Like a boot camp. Camp. A yeah, boot, boot camp. camp, yeah. But exactly. Islamic, Islamic boot camp. They get out yeah. from that school yeah. with knowledge, with a strong faith, uh, overcome any challenge they have in, the, in their life. Mm. So work, they go and work. Uh, well, th that's why, mashallah, da'wah in, in, in Europe, in, in, in uh, London especially, very, very uh, strong. Stronger than uh, America? Yes. Mashallah. Very, very strong. Very strong. Here it is strong, but there I think that, it's my humble opinion, uh, very strong down here because they learn from the mistakes in the history, and they put plans to overcome that challenges. Among them, this idea. To apply that here uh, in Killeen or even in Texas, it, till now is, 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 not, uh, is not easy. However, however, if we could do that, it's a big change. Number of Muslims, number of new Muslims uh, will be different. 
Subhanallah, Said he was uh, uh, he was talking about this idea uh, like uh, for a while already. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, we, we, but like, it needs resource. Yes, yes. One it more thing resource. about the new Muslims. You know, mm. this is a complaint for yeah. them because we, I mean, we we dealt with them like we deal yeah. with them. You know, yeah. yeah. They have a complaint. I'm I'm kind of voicing their complaint. Yeah. yeah. A lot of us, like the people born Muslim, you know, I mean, or the people who was like in da'wah, or who was at personal level or collective level, some of us are really tough on them. Yeah, not tough in teaching. And the, the, how they teach. How they teach, oh. yeah. Mm. It's not about like the character, no, no. Mm. We, the, most of us like nice to them, but mm. this is a complaint. Some of them, like, I don't know if because of the, the attitude or maybe lack of knowledge, I don't know, Allah knows. M maybe they, just, maybe like, they are not specialists. They, they, they overwhelm them mm. and they, they kind of, you know, they turn them off from Islam because like, yeah, if you have a lot, uh, this is, I mean, I'm sure you know that, I mean, kind of, you know. Yeah. Yes, yeah. yes. That's yeah. why I'm, I'm asking them when they convert, keep yes. in touch with the masjid and yes. your teacher, the imam. Yes, yes, yes. Anybody else assist the imam? But the, the issue is sometimes, the, you know, that the, it's kind of the big number and sometimes you go to, I mean, the, you yeah. come to a masjid, for example. Is it, is this masjid or any masjid? Mm. The, whatever they the believe, this is their voice, by the way. Mm. Some of them, like most of them believe that, like, if you are a Muslim, anybody in the magic can help me. Like, can teach me how to make wudu, mm -hmm. can teach me how to make salah, mm -hmm. can make me like the recite Surah Al-Fatiha and mm -hmm. recite some verses. Mm -hmm. And they can teach, ask him about some, a little fatwa, he can tell mm -hmm. me. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is like some of us are really tough with them. Mm -hmm. The way we, mm -hmm. like, kind of, very force it on, on them, like, you know, mm -hmm. whether like white or black. And, and, and yeah. that's a good idea, and that's a good uh, point that we can send a message from that program for everyone around uh, the community to please uh, help uh, by being kind, gentle in your teaching for uh, new brothers and sisters as uh, they are baby steps. Yes, it's, it's not yes, uh, a very good yeah. idea. Yeah. yeah, so please, if you wanna help, yes, help kindly and gently. If you uh, cannot the help, the send them great. to professional, yeah. professional, yes. uh, the imam or uh, what, 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 uh, whoever imam recommend to teach them. If, uh, yeah, yes, this is one of the issues. Yes, I agree with you. Yes, uh, some people get out of Islam because of that, and those people who cause that, they are suddu an sabilillah. Yes, yes, yeah, they yeah. block the way of Allah subhanahu wa taala in front of these people. And yawm al qiyamah is a big mistake, big, big trouble for them. You know, when I stand before Allah, why leave Islam? Why leave Islam? Mm -hmm. Because so and so dealt hard and harsh with me, my God. I think we, there is a lot of stories about that. A lot of stories about somebody, somebody in the, in the masjid, ordinary people, just like he, just like me or anybody else, trying to advise, trying to do uh, something, uh, trying to advise new Muslim with a good attention. But eventually, uh, it might have a, a negative impact or um, end up um, doing something wrong on the other side. That's that's right. That's so, right. So, so I think there's so many Muslim people will be watching us. What's your advice for them once they convert to Islam? Something practical, something easy. Say who we're talking about? <laughs> we're talking about something. Can I, you cannot tell them, oh, you have to be fully practicing everything 100%. No. How do you start? No. The example here, the Prophet, Ali Sallam, Sayyidina Muhammad, is the best example in da'wah and how he uh, used to deal with those who convert to Islam recently and deal with them, some according to their character, their, their attitude, their faith and iman. Some of them, they are strong iman and don't need all that struggling to help them. Some of them, they have challenge in their life. So I remember that uh, one of the tribes, they accept Islam and they negotiate with him about the Salah. Ya Rasulullah, it is so much. We're going to do just two or three. <laughs> Trying to get a bargain. Yes. 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 Get a little deal. He said, you okay, know, no problem. Are, you know, do it. Deals, okay, yeah. no problem. Do it. The Sahaba look at him like that. Ya Rasulullah. He said, wait. They're going to come next year with full time salah. <laughs> don't, don't worry. So he deal with them he, according. He, he, just let's say that clearly. Yes. Sayyidina Muhammad yes. accepted 
Yes. Rasulullah. Yeah. Accepting. He's talking about Salaam, Ramadan. Fasting hard for them. Accepting, accepting, reducing the five times prayer to two prayers. They, they asked him that. I understand, so but he accepted it. He, he told them, no problem. You can do that. And the Sahaba, like you, kid, are amazed from that. I'm just saying this so, loud. Yeah. So <laughs> yeah. So the the Rasulullah respond them, don't worry. They're gonna come next. A specific tribe, not all cases like that. But a it specific happens. tribe. It, it happened. happened. Uh, they're gonna come next year with full time. We're gonna do uh, because the faith at the beginning, like when you grow a seed. If you care from the seed and water it and give it soil and give it the needs of that, it grow till it stand strong in front of the wind of the life. If you hard from the beginning with it, gone and die. So Rasulullah, very smart, very genius in, in his example for, for da'wah. And look, long vision term. These people will come next year to visit us and pray with us with their salah, complete salah, five times a day. So uh, uh, dealing with da'wah in this land, should anyone, anyone work in that, take care of uh, the person, background, uh, his financial situation, his social situation, mm -hmm. or her family, Yani, one of the cases, and they come to Salah almost every day, sister. And uh, she is married non-Muslim. No. And, and I told her, and Islam should be a Muslim husband. She asked me 40 years. I love, I love each other so much. They've been together for 40 years. For 40 years. Oh. And have kids, mm -hmm. adult kids. And we love each other. Like, okay, no problem. Let him come. She told me he practiced uh, Christianity and he loved also Christianity. And uh, I try, but he loved to be like that. How can we solve that uh, problem? problem? Islamically, Islamically, we have in the in the seerah something like that, but it's not final solution. Final solution. Yani uh, Zainab, daughter of the Prophet Her husband was Al Asim. He was, you know, Rabi'ah. Al Asim and Rabi'ah, non-Muslim. And he stay non-Muslim, and the marriage still stays sound, correct. Till he converted, he converted later. Salam didn't make another contract marriage. But during that, in, in Mecca, they practice as a wife and husband. He is none, and she is Muslim. Zainab and uh, Laos. Zainab is a daughter of the Prophet Rasul, Muhammad. The Prophet Muhammad. 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 Yeah. So, but this is not the final. The final of the message should the wife, Muslim, has Muslim husband, not non-Muslim. The ulama said about that, the nature of the, 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 the relation between them, Islamically is illegal. So illegal means they practice something wrong. But that's less than being a mushrika. Disbeliever. Disbeliever. If she is disbeliever or practice less than that, like adultery, like something like that. So they mention that it's less than shirk. If she meet Allah with that, Allah forgive for them, especially the environment, uh, the relation, the history. It is one of the biggest challenges in this in this environment, especially for sisters who marry and children. Would you so, say? Would you? Would you? Would you say that the Islam flexible more than being rigid? 
Exactly, exactly. Uh, in this case, and this many cases like that, not in all America, America, Europe, here and there, they uh, accept Islam while the husband know. So it's not my opinion, but this is color opinion mentioned by uh, different uh, imams, mm. big imams, uh, saying um, less this mistake, yes, but less than being disbeliever. So meet Allah in Tawheed, in La ilaha illallah, is not like meet Allah on something else. La ilaha illallah, Muhammad Rasulullah, with major sin, with uh, sinful action, is still less than meet Allah on disbelief. This is their opinion. So we, we try to solve the problem with them and give them advice, counseling, fatwa, uh, but in some cases, the uh, long, uh, you know, life together and 40 years, she told me, 40 years, they together. And mashallah, she has still tina. She coming to the masjid, pray, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, held in Islam so much. We're going to move to uh, a, uh, a little different subject. And you are uh, you are into that, and every imam of the masjid who really worrying about it in the West, which is the youth, yes. the kids, yeah, uh, growing kids or Muslim kids yeah. in a Western society. Mm. Well, let's agree that the Western society is our country. Yes, United States is our country. Exactly, and is our kids' country. Mm-hmm. We want it to be, it's the most powerful country, and we want it to be the most powerful country, and we will contribute to that uh, uh, greatness more and more. Uh, uh, But the stuff that the Muslims complain about, uh, you would be surprised the majority of the normal, ordinary families who want to just raise their kids who are not Muslims, they just complaining about almost the same thing. Uh, I'm not in the process to list all of this uh, stuff right now, but all of us would like to to raise good kids, exactly. ethical kids, absolutely, yeah. Beha- good behavior, mm-hmm. good behaviors, mm-hmm. uh, successful kids. How can we raise our kids Islamically in the West? Yeah, this is a long story. And every uh, family care about that, concerned about that, and they have right, of course. Um, it's different from society to another. Yani, clean society is not like Austin, not like Georgetown, not like Dallas, Houston. Why? I'm saying that because... We would like to have a message for, um, for to, uh, um, general to everybody. Uh, in, in, in the big communities, the problem less. Why? Because they have resource, financial, and physical educational resources. Uh, You see, for example, in Houston, in Austin, in Dallas, Islamic school full-time. They have in Masajid programs only for youth, and there is uh, people work for that. Not the imam, imams help and support or the leader or management for that. But there is director for youth, director. Okay, volunteers work in that. So all the society work for that mission, for that idea. In this, in Houston, in Dallas, in Austin, here and there. To start with the masjid. And it is circles. Family, circle, the masjid, circle, and the Islamic school circle. The three circles work to raise the children on a strong faith and strong being a US citizen, share and contribute in the society, the community, the country, and the ummah, Muslim ummah. Uh, cover the needs of the youth. How about the family? There's another point. What are you supposed to do? The family should bring early the children to the masjid and let them love the masjid. 
you see you come with your child, kids you come here and uh, Houston, Georgetown here and there the masjid me bring the children to the masjid so and so brother Ibrahim others bring the children there's a children race in the masjid they love the place some people they cut completely from the masjid they're just coming in Ramadan in Eid in uh, occasions just occasions so the kids grow away from masjid the masjid so don't complain now. Don't complain now. You get cut yourself from the masjid for years and then come to complain my kids now get out for uh, such, for drugs, for boyfriend, girlfriend, for uh, that, that and that. It's you, the family, I mean. The family, a big responsibility. You bring them to me and my job to teach them. My job to help them, okay? Some people, they believe that when I uh, teach Nurani and let the, the kid uh, read the Quran, now it's enough, it's good. They did the jobs. They did the job, no. Yeah. No, you just put him in the first step, KG. First step. Still in front of him or her, long term to be strong. Mm-hmm. Muslim in faith in knowledge about your deen so uh, I think I think I, I would like to emphasize one point mm -hmm. that you came up and you made a khutbah about it uh, I just want to mention it uh, right now you give some examples for the family who just really would like to raise their kids Islamically but they are still struggling bringing their kids, not able to bring it all the time, but trying their best. You, you came up with very good examples. So I would like you to, to introduce it to us again in the khutbah, and we mentioned it in the Zoom. Uh, I, will, I will actually also put that uh, the uh, Man and Institute uh, The environment, episode, you mean? The environment yes, inside the house. The what environment. Should we, what should we do? Probably we yes, don't... Not yes. everybody really knows what mm. should be done. I did this khutbah like one month ago and summarized it in a uh, paper worksheet. She, yeah, she I got, we got put the it sheet. here on the, got one. for the people I the cupboard, to help yeah. them how design, how to design uh, verbal, uh, visual... Uh, you know, different sides, different approach to establish Islamic environment inside the house is very important. If we have this vision, you can as, a, that as a parents, as a parents, mm -hmm. uh, father and mother okay. must have this. If you want to raise children as a Muslim, yes. So you have to start from the house, establish your house Islamic environment beside the masjid that make balance with outside. But cut with the masjid and no environment, Islamic environment in the house. So what do you expect? What do you expect at the end? Of course, the impact outside will be strong and take the child from you to that way. So it is family first and the willing of the family, what the family want for their kids, for the youth. And the masjid, second. And there is Islamic school, third. By that order. This is my humble opinion about youth in this society. You know, some, some places... We're going we're gonna, to we're gonna, we're gonna understand so nobody feel guilty about the Islamic school. Having Islamic school everywhere is really tough in America. Yes, exactly. But look at it's the future. The future, inshallah, will be look promising. Look at the future. No, I, I'm, I'm talking about... Future of the youth, oh. when you raise your kids in Islamic school, is big difference, big difference. Yeah, and for myself, I'm, I'm talking about my kids in public school. I made a school at home. Every day, in the weekend, they have like full time. In the business days, they have like 30, 40 minutes. Are you in talking the morning, about full time Islamic school? Like edu Islamic education yes, at home? Yes, at home. At, at home, home okay. with my kids. I want to make sure. Uh, before going to school, 30, 40 minutes in the morning, they recite Quran, they review dua, they review seerah, 
Tawheed. When we go to the car, drive the car, repeat after me, say after till we reach to the, the school. That every day. But still, my looking to my kids is not like I want them. It's not like I hope, I wish. If they are overseas, their Arabic will be better. Overseas in the Muslim country? In, in Egypt, yeah. specifically. Yeah. Their Arabic will be in, is, is, is good, better. Their Islam is better. Their practice of the Islam is better, and so on. But it is a hard environment. And I'm very flexible because I understand the nature of the society. So, in short, about the youth, all of us are responsible for them. And we should put strategy, uh, plan for the future of them. And still we are on the road. We have kids like your kids, my kids, till seven, nine. So if we plan from now, this group, I have like 20 here for, 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 for Sunday school. Uh, these kids after two, three years will be youth. You understand? So still we are on the way for mm -hmm. helping them to stand strong about their faith. And the very, very important, most important point concerning learning, teaching uh, uh, the youth, teach them uh, their faith, their iman, their aqidah, their tawheed, uh, to stand strong in solid land about their faith. When they meet non-Muslim outside, Christian, atheist, whoever, they can argue, they can discuss their faith rationally, logically with them. They have confidence of their faith. Correct. What's happening, they learn, the family teach them Nurani, teach them Quran, that's all. We discuss about Allah, about prophets, about misconceptions about Allah, misconceptions about prophet, they cannot answer. That's make them easy. Target, easy target. Ah, easy target for others. So, as a parent, as an imam, as a teacher, I'm responsible for my kids to teach them first aqidah, strong aqidah, strong faith. They can discuss, they can argue, they can, you know, with others, with non-believers about their faith. Because the environment, we are minority among majority non-believers. So, Absolutely gonna one day face a body who is deny God. Prove me how God is existing, how God is one, is not uh, how God not doesn't have son. All that should kids learn it early, seven, five years old, raise on that way of you know uh, education, and then after that etiquettes, adab, you know. Uh, Akhlaq, uh, learn about Quran, recite Quran, all that. The point is, we sometimes put the culture ahead from the deen. Put the culture in some, in some families. The culture, uh, the custom, the habit before the you know, religion. And believe that culture is a religion. They believe that. Some, some families believe the culture That's correct. Is, a, is a religion. It's not like that. Not like that. No. Uh, Alhamdulillah. Yeah, what, uh, one more thing about, maybe we, uh, we finish with this one. If you, if you are in charge, I mean you are in charge, but if you are in like more, like, you know, yeah. What is missing in our message in the West from your experience in Dawah? What is missing? In general or for youth? In general, for reborn, for revert, for youth, mm -hmm. in general, you know? Yeah. I mean, if you are, if you are, if you want to take a decision mm -hmm. to adjust something in the message, mm -hmm. what was what was what was this decision to take? Yeah, yeah. yeah the message is working, alhamdulillah. But more activities, more activation for the message uh, than that. Working in different fields with the youth, with the kids, with the women, with the non-Muslims, with the new Muslims, more active, more activation. Yeah, we can see that message work like 60 percentage and we need it to be like 90, 95. I can't, I can't work, yeah. You understand? So to reach to that uh, percentage, 
you need resource, you need volunteers, you need many, many stuff. And the on, on the way for that. Some message, mashallah, I visited uh, last week, last uh, Friday, Aisha, Masjid Aisha, amazing. I like it so much. Do you think, uh, I got a critical question. Mm-hmm. Do you think it has something to do about finance, which is the money, that, that financial, that, uh, that probably is a, is a big problem, or management? Or volunteer, enough volunteer or skills? All of that. All of that? Mm. But. All of that. Yeah, all of that. Really. All of that. Okay. Okay. I have one experience in, uh, in the other state, in the East Coast. Yeah. One masjid was financially very strong. You know, it was like really, mm. you know, but there is no volunteers. There is nobody, nobody has time. Not, I mean, they are mm. great people, mm. you know. I was one of them, but, you know. But busy. Everybody's busy working mm. like, you know, yeah, and just family and work. And uh, everything is there financially, but there is nothing. Nobody has time. Time is the time is the biggest asset. I mean, exactly. if you have time, exactly. I mean, you know, yeah. Well, yeah. <coughs> if you are in a, if you have a Sunday school over here, you have a Sunday school over here, and you are teaching some way or somehow. Uh, but let's say how. Let's say somebody is volunteering with you. This is going to be my last question. It just came up to my mind with this subject. Uh, somebody is teaching, helping you, volunteering for, 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 with you from the community. From, let's say, for the last 10 or 20 volunteer uh, volunteered with you or participated with you, how many of those 20 people for the last so many years were helpful out of them were, I don't want to say 50% capacity, how many of them were really go, would, were doing good job and the others are, are just... Yeah, yeah, less, less than uh, 25, 25%. So that's percentage. a skills problem here. Uh, some of them, they just come for, uh, take hours, later for hours. They need hours for something. No, I'm talking about real volunteer, not the people who need volunteer hours for 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 reasons. No, for reasons. No, no. Do you really want to help in the Sunday school? But probably they don't have the capacity or the skills or the or the training or the knowledge. I had before Corona because we have Corona we are more active than that. Uh, I have a list for like uh, nine or ten volunteers. Uh, three of them, they are, yeah, they, uh, work hard, skillful, and support fully the the school. But others come for you know just to help me to control the kids, uh, give me some water, uh, make cubby in the machine, cubby something like that. That's the most that they can do. That's yeah. all what they can yeah. do. Uh, that's that's okay. Yeah, yeah, but that's not what you need. Yeah, but no, we need vol- professional volunteers. That's what I'm talking in, about in here. In teaching, in teaching. In, and for example, this new Muslim, we talk about new Muslims, for example, new Muslims, they need two, free, two, four volunteers, their job, from sisters and from brothers. It's the important. new Muslims. It's important. The new yeah. Muslims. Yeah. In the youth, we need volunteer for youth. Bring them. Make them uh, play outside, let, let them play soccer, play basketball, and then bring them to the masjid for halaqa. Uh, overnight program, we should do that. Overnight program, bring all the kids and stay in the masjid at night and pray the hadjud together. As activity, we miss it here. Don't you think, don't you think, a man, that uh, the non Muslim, after they convert and become an activist, they send a message about Islam even better yes. than us. Yes, absolutely. Started from Malcolm X to Muhammad Ali to here in local to the to local. the older new generation right now. They send a message local, even better than us. In local here, I have mashallah a good number of uh, new Muslims who came and uh, go back with a good message, and they bring back with wife with brother with friend with uh, to be a Muslim why because his friend a husband uh, the the child good a Muslim so give them good image about Islam so open the gate open the way, way for Islam so yes yes alhamdulillah, alhamdulillah. I think uh, 
we can talk like this <laughs> yeah. like for hours and hours. Yeah. I know uh, there's a lot of challenges and there is solutions. Uh, and uh, But uh, the, the time has to come to an end. Alhamdulillah. And uh, we would like to thank you for your time and your effort. And I'm sure there is a lot of benefit today that we learn ourselves and whoever watching us also will learn from. And uh, hopefully we can, uh, you know, uh, meet with you, hopefully to allow us to meet with you over and over again. Inshallah. And, and update you about what we learned. Inshallah, when, uh, one day we'll meet you when you uh, running uh, full-time school, Inshallah, Islamic school. I hope so. You know, I mean, this is, you know, yeah, you Allah have to... Yeah, yeah, accept, yeah, I mean, anything yeah. starts with an idea, right? Idea, exactly. Yeah, everything exactly. starts, yeah. you have to start somewhere. Alhamdulillah. Yeah, Alhamdulillah. Jazakumullah mm. khaira. Thank mm. you for allowing me talking to you about that uh, to benefit uh, uh, new Muslims and youth and all. And uh, counseling advice, um, you know, the administration, the uh, people in the community about the real and the future, we hope. And uh, I want to say something about myself. I'm not perfect. No, I'm perfect. I'm not perfect. I'm try my best to, to help and serve. And uh, uh, we say in Egypt, uh, one hand cannot yes. clap yeah. alone. She was two hands. Two. So me uh, alone is not enough to raise uh, da'wah, good da'wah, and uh, good Muslim, new Muslims and good youth. Imam, uh, if you look around us, uh, Imam like manager, and has stuff under his hand to help for that mission. Allow me to, to, to phrase it, hopefully I phrase it right. He's a visionary person. Yeah. Yes. Murabbi, uh, a leader, not necessarily uh, exactly. uh, doing everything. Exactly, exactly. One more thing. Uh -huh. can, can you end with the, can, as a dad, as a father, mashallah, mm -hmm. can you give advice for our young age, young people, as a dad. Give them yeah, advice. Of course. As a dad. Not Abs a, I mean, just as a father, and you just have this care and love to your kids. And I mean, the, the all your kids, anyway. Yeah, you know? yeah. Just to give them advice. They listen. I'm sure some of them will listen to us at some point. And, yeah, uh, I, I, yeah. I, I go to the parents first, uh, who has a teenager. Parents who have teenagers. You have uh, teenager, and teenager in this environment is hard. Is, is a trouble, we can see that. Whoever have, uh, whoever has a teenager has a, a trouble in that house. So be patient, open your mind, understand the nature, the age. This for the, uh, uh, for the parents, for the youth uh, involved in the masjid and uh, uh, keep, it, keep in touch with the masjid. Uh, your future start from Baytullah ta'ala and uh, being a Muslim American Muslim is a big responsibility our job to convey uh, the hidayah the light of Iman of Islam to all people around us uh, and uh, you will receive a barakah blessing from Allah for that uh, mission and uh, I do that for my kids um, teach them our mission our job in this dunya in general and what Allah select for us to carry the message of Tawheed of guidance of Hidayah to people here in this environment they are need they are in need for for Iman for Islam for for Tawheed and also involve them in sport athletics very important because very important. yes youth is a power energy this energy should come out for benefit so Beside their school and studying, should involve in kind of sport, soccer, football, uh, basketball, whatever, what they love, let them involve in that. That helps them to get this energy out, uh, to be positive energy in their life, change their life to be positive life. Now, Alhamdulillah. Yeah, we uh, again, we uh, thank Sheikh Ahab for his time and uh, may Allah accept from him and from us, and give all of us sincerity and uh, 
put light on our heart is to uh, convey the message. The main, our main job is to convey the message in uh, this uh, environment. Inshallah. Jazakumullah khayyam. Wa salli allahumma wa sallim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'ina. Alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen.